Hey, hey, cunt. Is that working? Yep. All right. Welcome to episode 177 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Let Look, let's get a few things out of the way. Yes. Missed many, many fucking episodes. Do I have a good reason? Yes. Uh, but you know what? I fucking moved house, all right? I was moving house. Coronavirus has been happening. I had to fucking move from my house and the warehouse and my girlfriend's house. Took it with me, right? And now I'm, I'm in a fucking palace. I'm living in an absolute palace. As you can see, I'm in, I'm in a fucking bare walled rental, right? Because for some reason, when you, when you rent a home, I, d- I didn't know this. I've only ever lived with my parents and they never gave a fuck about the walls because dad's a builder. Apparently, when you rent a home, you're not allowed to like art or anything that looks nice or have or do anything. You're supposed. It's like walking into an empty fridge and not filling it with food. It's like, oh, sorry, you'll fuck the fridge if you put eggs in there. You can't put anything on the fucking walls. So I'm sitting here. I look like I'm in a fucking insane asylum. A sane asylum? Insane asylum. I hate it. It sucks. I gotta, I, I've never asked permission to do anything in my fucking life. Now I've got to ask, oh, is it okay if I hang up some art on the walls? I fucking tried those sticky hook things. They don't work. They don't fucking work. Who invented that? Oh, it doesn't leave a mark. Oh, cool. It also, you know what, you know what else it doesn't do? It doesn't hang anything. Five kilo limit my rectum. I fucking hung something up. I was real happy about it. It fell down. I'm looking at it now on the floor. Fucking hooks don't do anything. All I, all I want to do is get a hammer and a nail and put it straight through the fucking dry raw wall. But if I do that, some soulless fucking property manager is going to come and send me a big email. Oh, you can't do that because... Shut up, cunt. Get some drywall. I'm paying you hundreds of dollars a week to fucking do nothing. Let me put a hole in your fucking wall. Jesus Christ. Also, sorry for missing an episode, guys. Welcome to the podcast. It's Spearhead Sundays. Just had to get that off my chest. I hope you guys are uh, doing well in quarantine. As you can see, I'm going insane. Um, I, yeah, I've, I've moved house, guys. The warehouse... As a, do you guys remember, like, it, it was it was like one, 12 months ago. Do you guys remember that 12 months ago? What was that, early 2019? How good was the warehouse? How fucking good was that shit? My channel was booming. I was uploading two times a week for like eight months. Keelan liked coming to work. So did I, right? And then all of a sudden, right, it this warehouse district went from a place where cunts stored shit that they probably should have never bought like oh i need 360 boxes worth of transformers that was that was my neighbor some cunt who bought too many fucking toys and that was perfect because i related to that because i am a cunt who buys too many toys not enough to get a storage unit yet right but I'm on my way there. That's who I wanted to be neighbours with. Some guy who would every now and then rock up to his storage unit and put another fucking transformer there and be like, ah, this is worth having, while Mary Kondo fucking cries. It doesn't bring you joy. Throw it out. Shut up, bitch. I'm not going to read subtitles just to clean my fucking room. How are those people? Do they, they just don't, like, they won't watch anything with subtitles in it ever. How, how, I love that people are aggressive about that shit too. Like, I don't want to look at subtitles if I have to watch something. Dude, you're a fucking moron. Absolute moron. If you can't deal with subtitles, I'm sorry, you're a fucking idiot. Every one of you, anyone listening to this, oh, you don't like subtitles? Hey, dude, you've got a small brain. It moves slowly. Did you know that? If you can't deal with subtitles in a movie, your brain moves slower than everybody else and you're dumb and you shouldn't be allowed to vote. Let's get it out there, right? If you can't deal with subtitles in a fucking movie, your brain moves in slow motion because everybody else can deal with it and enjoy it. It's not even dealing with it. I can watch a movie and thoroughly enjoy it even though it has subtitles. You know why? Because my brain moves regular, at a regular pace. It's not a fast brain. I'll forget things. I'll say dumb shit. But I tell you what, it doesn't move in slow motion like yours. Oh, you can't deal with subtitles? Dude, imagine being a guy who can't deal with subtitles and then he goes deaf. 
And you know that the kind who can't deal with subtitles in the movie, a, a guy who can't deal with subtitles in a movie, you know for sure that he's the type of moron to let fireworks off next to his ear just because he's unsure if they're working or not. And instead of getting, you know... Uh, 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 someone to look at it who knew what they were doing, he's like, I'll just light it and put it next to my ear. And then he goes deaf. And he can just never watch a movie again because it's got subtitles in it. He probably can't understand sign language either because that involves like looking and understanding at the same time. That's incredible. Those people who can't uh, deal with subtitles in movies, those are the same cunts in, in high school when they're reading a page where they read it like this. The boy went down the road and jumped over the log and then he picked up the frog and the frog's name was Geoff. G was the frog's name was Geoff. Jeff, you idiot, and they're 25. <laughs> And they're the type of people that they read a whole paragraph and the words go into their mind but not into their memory. They just fucking... The word goes straight from their eyeballs to their mouth, comes out their mouth, and then just it's gone. It's like, did you understand any of that? No. Did you read it? Yes. How? No reading comprehension. Bro, if I want to watch a movie... I want to watch it in my own language. That's the most American shit ever. In this country, we don't care about culture from any other country. That's awesome. All these people saying that Parasite shouldn't have won an Oscar because it had subtitles in it. Bro. Expand your fucking horizons. Now, with that being said, right... I'm going to piss off a lot of other fucking cunts. And I do realize that I'm supposed to be talking about me moving house, but this is Spearhead Sundays, land of the tangents, okay? this I'll get to it, but right now I just thought about how much I hate reading on Twitter people going, I'm not going to watch that, it's got subtitles. Now that I've said that, right, I'm now going to piss off a, not everyone who just agreed with me, right? I've got the people who hate subtitles fuming, but don't worry, I'm going to piss off... 50% of the people who hate you, right? This is Spearhead Sundays, right? Land of the tangents and contentious opinions with no real logic or research backed up. It's just how I feel, okay? So I don't like people who can't deal with subtitles in a foreign film, right? But allow me to piss off half of you who agree with me right now, okay? I can deal with subtitles in a foreign film, but dear Lord, if you try and make me watch an anime with subtitles and the Japanese language, fuck that. Absolutely not. It is a cartoon. Dub it, put it in my language, and then I'll enjoy it. No way. Have you ever tried to fucking listen to an anime with the original dub? Disgusting. Oh, what's the dub, Twip? It's And that's the male character. It's fucked, bro. Have I, one time, I, I didn't even know, when I was a kid, right, I didn't know that Dragon Ball Z was Japanese. And that's not retarded, that's being 11, okay? I, when I was 11, I didn't know that Dragon Ball Z was Japanese, okay? The internet wasn't prolific, I was fucking 11, right? I had never heard of hentai. I was just living my life, waking up, it was on cheese TV, I'd have my fucking porridge in the morning, mum would scream at me to turn it off, and it was in goddamn American, and I enjoyed that shit. And then I found out that it was in Japanese. And my cultured little mind went, oh, well, if it's in Japanese, I should watch the original version. That will be better. Right? And Goku goes from, you know, a guy that's like, hi, I'm Goku. I'm like, I'm the protagonist, but I'm also a good guy. And then you fucking listen to it in the Japanese dub. Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? It's fucking terrible. Never, ever... Try and make me watch a fucking Japanese anime with the original dub. It sucks. Terrible. And if you honestly like watching anime with the Japanese dub, now it's fair enough, right? I'll, you know, I'll extend a little olive branch here to all you fucking weeaboos that are absolutely raging, smashing your ham fist sized ham planet sized fists on the fucking table it's about enjoying it in its original form right okay if 
The anime doesn't have an English dub, of course. You can watch that in Japanese. What did I really like? That fucking, was that really weird uh, anime that was full of sexual jokes. It was like stocking and something. It was like two girls and they were like, and there was a big black dude with an afro that was almost certainly a racist caricature, but it was quite funny. I think it was called like stocking and panty or some shit like that. And it was very funny, had very funny jokes in it. No English dub, had to watch it with the Japanese dub, loved it, right? But if you try and fucking make me watch Dragon Ball Z with the Japanese dub, have a fucking listen to Goku scream. Ah! It's disgusting. I'm shocked that it even was popular enough to make it to a fucking English dub. Filthy. Jeez, we're really going to find out today how soundproof my house is, huh? (laughs) Neighbours are probably like, who the fuck just moved in? Right? Now that I'm done pissing off almost 90% of the listeners, it's time to talk about what's been happening. I've been moving house, right? The warehouse started off incredible for my business and it was such an essential step for me uh, and and my content and and the goal to bring audacious stand-up comedy to the world and it was going so good. But it, it just changed. All of the neighbors went from store. It was originally a storage unit. And then I think the guy who ran it worked out he could make a lot more money if he was charging businesses like me, a business to run out of there. So we, he filled it with businesses and no fault to him because he's a lovely man. Um, but it just got crazy. Like it was a warehouse district. It was fucking power tools going off. The neighbor that I had was an absolute fucking cunt. He would play hard style during the day. During the day. First off, bro, you're 40. Stop listening to hard style. Your day is done, right? Unless you, uh, if, if you are 40 and you still listen to hard style, look, I hate to break it to you, but you're a date rapist. Absolutely. You put pills in girls' drinks when they're not looking. If you're 40 and you listen to hard style, you should be in prison because you are a date rapist. You are 45 and you have a 17-year-old girlfriend if you listen to hard style. I'm sorry, but that's what, that's the truth. Show me a 45-year-old person who isn't a successful DJ, right, that still listens to hard style, and I will show you a man who has a 16-year-old in their basement. And I'm so glad that I can say that because I've been holding that shit in for fucking months because every time I would try and fucking record the podcast, he would turn his hard style on and I, it would take every fiber of my being not to turn the podcast off, march down there and go, where are the girls? Let them go. Right? So it, it just got absolutely fucked. It got unbearable. So I had to leave and I got out and I was like, well, Originally, we were planning on getting like a really big space, a space for Luke Kidgel's stuff, a space for my stuff, and a space big enough to do Luke and Lewis as well, like a really big mega place. But then this corona shit happened, dude. 23 of my shows canceled. Luke's whole national tour canceled. And Luke and Lewis lost Nobby, their main sponsor. I don't know if you listen to the show, but it was like fucking easily half of the income that Luke and Lewis made. So that just immediately became, at least for a year, probably more like two, financially unviable. Could still afford the warehouse, but at that point the warehouse was costing me money because I couldn't film. That was That's the, honestly the main reason why Speared Sundays has been so fucking erratic was because I just couldn't film. Sometimes I would stay there on a Friday night, mind you. I, w- I remember one, this is when I decided to move out. Friday night, I got there. I was like, I need to film. I got a gig tonight. I got there at 4.30 p.m. And I w- sat there waiting to record a fucking podcast and a video for six hours. And then I had to fucking leave to go to my gig. And I was like, this is terrible. It is costing me time and money. I can't get the videos out to you guys. I can't do the fucking podcast that you cunts love because I know you cunts love it because every time I miss one, it's like I just killed my own mother and I get cancelled on Twitter every fucking week. So I was like, you know what? I need to come up with a better solution. Let me just restart my camera here because I'm not on the big boy yet. All right, I'm back, right? So I had to come up with another solution. So I thought, okay, uh, obviously, I can't really film at home. That doesn't really work because, you know, everyone runs a business at home and it's very busy. I can't do it at the warehouse because there's too many businesses running out there. And now this big space that we were planning on getting doesn't work. So 
I have moved to a big house, right? I've got a few bedrooms. This is my office, right? And uh, my bedroom's over there. And out the back, which I will eventually move to once it's all built out, I've got a garage, which we're converting into a studio, a film space. And they'll have the proper Speared Sunday set, the proper Luke and Lewis set, and uh, Lure Review and all that kind of bullshit. Until then, I'll just be filming in this room. I think you can probably notice it looks a lot better than uh, a lot of my other videos have. So there's lots of room, right? Now, you might be thinking, bro, Lewis has moved into a big house. He's fucking killing it. If he can afford a big house, dude, he must be absolutely nailing it. Coronavirus hasn't affected him at all. Guys, look, the only way that a fucking stand-up comedian can afford a big house, and by afford, I mean rent a big house, is to move where there barely even is electricity. Move so far out of civilization that you really just start to see another type of human. <clears throat> You know, like you're in the city, you'll see two types of humans. You'll see like wealthy people who have uh, incredibly professional jobs and Asians from China who have very wealthy parents and they're studying abroad because for some reason China gets a tax break if they send their kids over to Australia. Probably some kind of deep psyops mission to destroy our culture from the inside. Or at least that's what Alex Jones has been telling me. Shout out to all my foreign student listeners. I know you love the show. Um, <laughs> you have to move so far out that you start to see another type of human. Now I'm talking like, like I'm talking the type of human that has that, that does that knows what jeans are, but would never wear them because those are for city slickers. You know, the type of cunt that will only ever wear trackies because there's a lots of room for his wallet, his two phones, and a flick knife. I'm talking so far out of civilization that for some reason you just start to see lots of people using mobility scooters even though they look perfectly healthy, right? Where I used to live, I would only see cunts in mobility scooters because they looked immobile. Here, I see people riding around in mo mo mobility scooters wearing sweatpants and also looking like they could hold up a gas station in, at, the, at the flick of a knife, Basically, right? I don't know what it is about these areas, but there are lots of healthy looking people wearing in fucking mobility scooters. I don't know if it's a Centrelink scam or a motorbike accident. Could be a bit of both, right? I'm saying you have to move so... To, to afford a nice house in Victoria, not even a nice place, like, a, like a, an all right place, you have to move to Frankston. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new era of Lewis Spears content. From straight out of Frankston in 2013 to going straight back into it. The fucking studios in Frankston, the content's coming at you hot, thick, heavy, and irradiated with ice from Frankston. Welcome to the new era of Spearhead Sundays, ladies and gentlemen. If you thought the warehouse stories were fucking lit, Wait do you hear the fucking Franga quarantine stories. Dude, I was at IGA the other day, or today I was at IGA, right? I'm losing track of time in this quarantine shit. I leave the house and I thought it was a couple of days ago. It was only a few hours ago. What fucking day is it? I don't know when I'm, op when I'm uploading this. It could be a Tuesday, it could be a Sunday. Time has lost all meaning, for fuck's sake. And I never used to leave the house much, but I've got... I, this quarantine shit's got me fucking lost. Are you okay? You, oh, you mustn't be if you've made it this far into a fucking Spearhead Sundays episode without tuning out and engaging with a hobby or an interest. Jesus Christ, how are you holding up? Hey, all you ladies and, and boys and girls listening to the fucking show, are you all right? I, I, I think I'm doing actually doing great apart from me losing track of time completely i'm doing great i'm nailing this quarantine shit dude you know i i'm i'm fucking engaging with all my hobbies i'm catching up on everything i'm sorting out all my video stuff i'm organizing all my files i'm setting up a new studio i'm getting creative dude i'm learning some new skills on photoshop that i didn't know and i didn't really have time to learn until now i'm using my time productively and wisely i'm facetiming with my friends you know, I was on a big FaceTime with, with Cursor and the boys. We were telling jokes that would get us all cancelled. It was great. 
I'm doing every. I'm playing video games, dude. I'm leveling up, leveling up a new character on World of Warcraft. I fucking jumped in the Patreon uh, Discord. All my Patreon supporters. They've set up a fucking Minecraft server for Easter. They did a scavenger hunt. I wanted to join in, but then my game was updating and I missed it. But I'm definitely going to be jumping in the next one. It's great. Engaging in all my hobbies. I'm nailing this quarantine shit. You know who's not nailing quarantine? Dude, you, the people that are really suffering in this quarantine shit, I think we all really need to have a moment of silence for the heaviest hit people during this quarantine crisis. It's not the elderly, it's not the disabled, and it's definitely not those people who are infected with COVID-19. The most heavily hit by this quarantine situation are pretty girls. Jesus Christ, the amount of desperation and and crises and existential, the amount of existential crises I have seen on Instagram from pretty girls has, is just insane. These poor, attractive women just have no idea what to do with themselves now that there's no one out there to look at their tits. The minute, right... I thought that I was going insane because I haven't performed and gotten on stage for a little bit. Dude, try and see a 9 out of 10's Instagram when no one's bought them a drink for three days. Jesus Christ, that is fucking sad. The amount of fucking beautiful girls I've seen on Instagram shaving their heads for attention is atrocious. Will someone please get those bitches a hobby? It is absolutely sad. I bet all of these 6 out of 10 women with their interests and personalities are fucking kicking back. Take that, Brittany, you vapid whore. You fucking, you got nothing now. Oh, there's no one out there to call you beautiful and simp over you. And now you have to, you're stuck at home going, fuck, I didn't engage with any skills, interests or hobbies. And now I'm bored. What do I do without these endorphins of all these fucking dudes chasing me around? What am I going to do? Maybe I'll try and be funny. Oh, that doesn't work. Fuck. (laughs) I'm sorry, beautiful ladies. I love you. But we also know you didn't really maximize on your life, did you? And why would you? You know, if I was an 11, you know, would I be doing this? Absolutely not. If I was an 11 out of 10, dude, I never would have started a YouTube channel. (laughs) Could you fucking, would I ever start a YouTube channel if I was an 11 out of 10? Absolutely not. You know what I would do if I was an 11 out of 10? Nothing. Because everyone else would do it for me. And we all know that's true, right? We all know it's true. Look, what I'm trying to say is, ladies... This, that rant didn't come from a place of hatred. It came from a place of jealousy. Because I, that's just me if I was an 11 out of 10 male. I wouldn't be doing shit. You ever, you ever see those dudes? I think they're rarer than women. You ever see those dudes that are just like a, a fucking straight 11? You ever see those dudes and they just... And you just know. If you're an 11, you just fucking know, right? And they're just hanging out with the hottest chicks you've ever seen in your fucking life. And you know how they, you know, they, they've got that one look in every fucking photo. Girls do it too, to an extent, but really attractive men. They just have this, this look. They all have the same facial expression. Every time they're in an Instagram photo, a really attractive dude, right? He's always in the middle of the photo. And he's always got his arms around two people, doesn't matter what gender. And he's just looking at the lens going, I could fuck your mother, but I won't because she doesn't meet my standards. (laughs) That's the look that every 11 out of 10 male on Instagram has in every one of his photos is I could fuck your mum, but she's not good enough for me. And you know what? You got to respect it. You have to respect it. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Guys, I live in Frankston now. So if you ever, ever think about fucking with me, it's over. If you ever write a mean comment on my Instagram, 
you're punching down because I now am living in a lower socioeconomic region. So I am finally, after all these years, after all this time, oppressed. And you know what I'm going to do with this newfound oppression? You know what I'm going to fucking do? Am I going to fight for other people even more vulnerable than me? <laughs> no. I'm going to cancel cunts on Twitter. But what I'm saying is, guys, I've moved out and I'm in a new space and I am so fucking grateful to all of the people supporting me on Patreon uh, and who's, if, even if you've just picked up one of my comedy specials or bought a T-shirt or a hoodie, it's getting very cold. I was wearing mine before. I had to take it off. It's too fucking warm. If you want a hoodie, lousespears.com slash watch. If you want my special, that's the same URL. If you want to support me on Patreon, get early access to all of the podcasts and a sneak peek at the upcoming series of Cooking Without Instructions. You know what the fucking Google, you fucking idiot? Join the Discord, loser. We're playing Minecraft and I try to join those games. So, you know, it's fucking awesome. I am going to jump in one suit. But yeah, I really do appreciate all the people who've been supporting my shit, man, because that this would be impossible because I, you know, also I, I don't think that um, going to the warehouse would have been an essential activity anyway. I think at this point with the rules, I would be risking fines to go there. I think I actually got an email because I'm still in the loop because I got one more month left. They've locked the whole place down. So thank fuck I got out when I did because otherwise I just would be like, all right, well, I guess I'm uh, not filming ever. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I'll see you in a year. So thank you very much, uh, guys. This is this is really going to be good. I know I say this a lot, but I do say it with the best intentions. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there right now. I now have no excuses. If I can't do YouTube and the podcast regularly from here in my own house during quarantine, guys... Just find someone else. <laughs> just I just go somewhere else. Don't if I can't do this for at least a month, go somewhere else. Because I, clearly I don't deserve your support. If I can't pull this off, if I can't get out of bed, go in the shower, and then turn on the camera in my own fucking home, guys, go somewhere else. I don't deserve you. No, but I do appreciate you guys sticking around with me during all this fucking shit. I'm, try I'm trying my best. And uh, I've, it's all set up now. I've got my, like, basic rig ready to go. And I'm setting up the studio now. So the content's going to be rolling thick and fast. I've actually, uh, right now, I just filmed one video yesterday. I'm doing the podcast now. And I've just got back from Keel and three other videos. So it's looking like twice a week for the next six weeks. Um, at least with all the content that we have backed up and that's being worked on so far. So I'm, I'm feeling really good. And that doesn't even include the shit that I'm about to film. So it's really going to be happening. Uh, and uh, I, I really just want to keep you cunts entertained as much as I can during this quarantine shit. Because, man, that's what's been keeping me sane is, one, making this shit, and two, watching my favorites. So if I'm that for you, it's a fucking honor. And uh, I really am going to do my best with this shit. And I'm going to fucking do as much as I can and deliver as much value uh, to you guys and give it all out for free. And, uh, you know, if you want to throw me a bone, go for it. If you're doing it tough, no worries, man. I got you anyway. All right. So um, what else do we want to talk about here? Uh, yeah. So we've been moving in. And, dude, you know, this is like the greatest shit ever. You know what I've noticed? You know what I fucking noticed? I think... The only reason I was a messy person was just because I'm an asshole, and I just can't work to anyone else's schedule or rules ever, right? No matter, even if it's even if it's my own mother, who I love very dearly, but we were just working on different timetables. I was like, well, if I can't fucking load the dishwasher when I get home from doing a gig because it's too noisy. I'll just never do it. Now, bro, I'm doing this shit every day. It's my fault. It's on my timetable. I can't believe this. I'm 26 years old. I just moved out for the first time. I'm on my L's. And you know what? I thought that I was going to use this quarantine time to fucking smash out a driving lesson. Absolutely get, get the fuck off of my L's. Me and Jazz were planning it. Dude, this is going to be great. Every Wednesday we'll go for a drive. And then fucking three days ago... You know what happens? Some other poor fucking learner driver who was 16, some girl, gets fined for doing a driver's lesson with her mother. What the fuck? 
How is learning to drive not an essential activity? Especially if you're doing it with your own mother, who you live with, right? That's not, if, if you all have the disease, if you're doing a driver's lesson and you don't get out of the car, you're just still in your living room. You're not going anywhere. You're not infecting anyone. The windows are up. You're fucking concentrating. As long as you don't fucking go anywhere or get out of the car or stop to have a drink on a park bench, I'm pretty sure that's an essential activity that doesn't harm anyone. Fucking trust cops to use a pandemic to just revenue raise. Like, all right, guys, what we want you to do is to find people who are breaking the rules. And they looked at that and they were like, right, how can we protect the public without protecting them and just raise cash? Because that looks good for our fucking books, doesn't it? Swear to God, man, every single headline I see about people getting fined, it is for the dumbest shit. I saw one good one, some fucking moron eating a kebab on a park bench. Hey, dude, go home. You don't need to do that. I don't know. It's weird. What is an essential activity? When, when Scott Morrison, our prime minister, if you're fucking foreign, he goes, so what is an essential job? Because he's like, if you have an essential job, we want you to go to work. And some journalist goes, what is an essential job? And he goes, word for word, this is a quote, mind you, this is not made up. This is word for word. He said, well, an essential job is a job that you have. Oh, okay, ScoMo. So if I, an employer, just paid someone to go and lick people on the face, that's an essential job, is it? Licking cunts on the face because you get twelve ninety nine an hour to do that shit? I guess it is. Hey, if you, if you need a job, leave a comment below. <laughs> I'll be accepting resumes via my Patreon-only Discord. All right, cunts, what else do we have to talk about here? I'm going to get it. You might have noticed there's a second chair here. We've got a special guest coming in. I'll talk about that next step, next episode. Oh, George Pell being released. I don't have an hour and a half to scream about that, so I'm not going to fuck. I'm just, that sucks. And someone cough on him. Actually, you know what? George Pell being released during this time might be a great thing. Um, all right, I'm going to bring her in. Guys, welcome to the fucking podcast. The wonderful Jasmine. Hello. Thank you for having me no in worries. my house. Our house. Our house. Thank you. We have a house. And actually, if you think about it, it's kind of like maybe about 25% your house, if you're listening, because a lot of my money comes from you. Mm. So, you know. So just come over. I'm making... No, don't come anywhere. <laughs> don't fucking come anywhere near my fucking house. You know, I went to the, the Raka Raka house. In Adelaide, yeah, and they had people showing up really? all the time. It literally. And would they say hello to them, or did they, they like would knock on the front door? And then, how would the Racker Boys react? Literally every single day. I was there for like thirteen days. Every day they had knocks Man. on the door from fans, and they're all young. Did they get swatted? No. Why didn't they get swatted? Other YouTubers get swatted. I think that's more of a Twitch thing. Oh, okay. Um, but every day people would rock up. And they would go and answer the door and do photos and be nice. If Why? Someone, I don't. I've got no idea. If no. someone worked out where I live and came to my house for a photo, I'd say, hey, mate, if someone fuck w- off. I would build a fence. I'd just build a fence. Absolutely. With no doorbell on the fence. Sorry, yeah. you can't come in. They, <laughs> you no, can have a photo in front of my fence. That's fine. A lot of their fans are really young, which I can understand if they, they were like under 14. I understand that because they're dumb and young. But – a lot of them had their parents drive them to the house. Mm. How much of a shit parent would you have to be for your like son? I don't to go, know. Hey, Dad, I really want to go and visit adult strangers. And Dad goes, yeah, all right. Nothing wrong with that. No, I just think Fuck it's my like... Kids. I not think, that Racker are pedophiles. They're definitely not. That's not what I'm saying. I think people just don't think it through when it comes yeah. to YouTubers because people who consume YouTube don't necessarily think of YouTubers as real humans. Yeah. You're right. Like they like you're a YouTuber. Yeah. So you don't apply the normal rules. So can you imagine how far removed that is when you go, okay, so the parents, so someone who yeah. completely doesn't understand the culture, say, and, you know, people, they do that to the celebrities. They go on tours around Beverly Hills. Yeah. Looking at all of the celebrities' houses. Yeah, that's fucking so strange. Hey, maybe too. it's just it's part of the 
No, it's not. I was going to say maybe it's part of the price you pay for being a celebrity. It shouldn't be. I don't think that. All those people who go, oh, well, you became a celebrity, so you gave up your privacy. It's like what you're saying there is if they are a celebrity, you are allowed to be an asshole to them because someone yes. invading your, your privacy, what would you say that makes that person an asshole? Yeah, no. Just because someone <laughs> sings a song doesn't mean you're allowed to be a cunt. I think that's so ridiculous. Anyway, welcome, Jazz. How are you finding living together? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah? Yeah, it's good. I've got you whipped. No, you don't. Yes, I do. What do you mean? You've been doing all the housework. I'm enjoying doing do you know? all the housework. Yeah, You're exactly. not telling me to do it. I'm, exactly. I'm enjoying it. Yep. I'm not doing it Look for you. Look out, ladies, I'm, take note. I'm not doing <laughs> it for He thinks he does it for himself. I'm doing it for That's me. That's amazing. If we left the housework up to you, we'd live in a sty because you'd wake up at 11 and be like, I don't want to do the dishwasher. I'm sleepy. See, this is what, see I've, I've reversed. I'm not whipped. She's the, lazy. The gender norm, I've reversed it. You know, they normally think don't let the man do it because the man's so bad at it. I've just flipped that on its head. Now you think you have to do it. Otherwise, it won't happen. I can't do the laundry. Oh. All right. Oh. I'm on strike. I guess, Starting now. I'm on strike. I guess we can't. There's no more housework going on here. I was full of water. Yeah, what are you gonna do about it? But they, I'm not. We're in a rental. Fuck. <laughs> Guys, you might stay in the carpet. I think we're gonna. Well, it's you know, <sighs> it's week one. I think we might kill each other by the end of this. I think you misunderstand housework. Not doing housework does mm. not equal creating more housework on purpose. <laughs> mm, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, this is what I was saying at the start of the podcast. I, I can only I can only be clean if I don't have to clean on anyone else's timetable yes. or because of or their rules or around mm. them. It's if, true. At the minute, see, the minute Jazz was like, "Oh, you have to do this," I was like, "I'm going to start actively creating mess." Mm. Something in my brain goes, "Oh, you're telling me to do something. I'm going to do the opposite and then some." And it's do you know one what's of my great? biggest flaws? But also, mm. it's fuck. It's a good good bit of fun, isn't it? But sometimes I watch you doing something, and I know that you're doing it in the least efficient the way. Best way. And if I offer you any advice, mm. it will just make you angry. Yeah. So I don't. I just watch you do it. Sometimes I offer you advice. Sometimes I offer you advice. You go, fuck off. It's the only. <laughs> I don't talk <laughs> you to you. Do. Like, you guys are going to think that I'm abusive. <laughs> no, it's the only time you're ever mean to <laughs> me is when you're doing <clears throat> something wrong. And I'm like, hey, babe, yeah. I have an idea of how to do it better. And you'll be like, leave me alone. This doesn't sound like <laughs> Man, Not the leave me alone bit, the doing something wrong. Never done something wrong in my fucking life. I'm sorry. Did you build that bookshelf? Uh, that one there? Yes. You built that. Yeah, I did. How and good is it? Look at all the books that That panel that it holds. up the top and the panel down the bottom <laughs> mm -hmm. and the panel on the back that's falling off. Are they all wrong because you followed the instructions in the booklet or the instructions in your head? Look, those instructions tried to tell me what to do and that was strike one. You only <laughs> get one strike. strike. One. You get one strike. <laughs> <laughs> I learned long ago not to let Lewis make flat pack furniture. Whatever. It's Guys. true. Look, it's true. He is not allowed to make it. He this was his own shelf, so I left him to his own devices just to remind him how bad he is at it. Yeah, look, it works. It holds books. It's a shelf. I'm happy with it. And it's a visual reminder for you next time we buy a flat pack. Yeah. not to sick because when we first got together, yeah, we we bought a bed, mm -hmm. and you, I wanted to build it, and you refused to let me help you. You said no, I'm doing it. I wanted to build a bed. I like building shit. He does like building stuff, but that does not mean that he is good at it. <laughs> Guys, follow your passion. You don't have to be good at something. You don't have to be a world And your dad's a carpenter builder. and your yeah, brother look, is a carpenter you know and you can't build an Ikea shelf. I've accepted my limitations. You know what I am, what I've realized? I can't build big things. I can fucking nail building a small thing, a little miniature. I'll nail that. I'm great at that. Build okay. it, paint it, so okay. It, so basically what shit. you're saying, yeah. if the item has no yeah. practical use, uh -huh. you're you're on it. I'm I'm gonna nail that shit. Yeah. What are you What are you for? even if it Nothing? has nothing? Fuck. <laughs> Nailed it though, didn't I? <laughs> even if it has instructions, do you follow instructions with that? Uh yeah, with them I will. Or are they strong recommendations? If they're small, I'll follow the instructions. <laughs> Just tiny Look instructions. Up at tutorials. Yeah, I'm always. That's if ninety percent of my YouTube building, is watching English cunts so teach you, me how to paint. So you, they're this big, aren't they? You build these tiny miniatures that are that big. Yeah. So does that mean the instruction booklet is that big? <laughs> that was a terrible joke. <laughs> no, no one didn't land. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Welcome, Jazz is back. We've been, we've been having a great time together. We've never lived together. Mm -hmm. We've been together for like uh, five years or so. You know how long we've been Seven together. Seven years. Well, 
eight. Almost. Almost eight. When's our That's anniversary? seven. Today he Almost forgot my birthday. Today he forgot my birthday. We were no, signing up for Animal Crossing. No. We were signing up for Animal Crossing account. Yeah. And he decided to put my birthday in because it's mm. coming up sooner. So we thought yeah. we might get a present. He goes, babe, what's your birthday? No, I, that's not mm, what happened. Right? right. I it's didn't not? forget your birthday. It's not. We were playing Animal Crossing and I just was giving it to you. It was your turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you put in the name. It was my turn yeah. to put in the birthday. We were taking it in turns. I didn't forget we were but taking I it offered, in turns. But I offered to let you have my turn. But that would be unfair. But you, you couldn't quite remember no, when I my birthday No, I just was trying is. to follow the rules of gaming etiquette. You finish one level and then you pass it off. You're a real tyrant, a Lewis. Your <laughs> rules are the only rules that matter. <laughs> That's right. You just make them up and what you say <laughs> goes. Uh, we we joke, but we're we're having. We're a very time. happy, yeah. Right. If this is this is the this level of banter is the only thing that sustains our relationship. If you can, if, if because if I did this to a fragile girl, she'd be gone, and I'd I'd be cancelled. Right. Yeah. You need, work, a, you need a strong this is, woman. Ladies, this who's is a, a bit secret. of an asshole. If you you're just a have strong man, who's one a day a month where mm-hmm. you get all your crying out. The rest of the time, they I don't still, even know. You they are so painting know. this relationship. That it's just the worst shit ever. That's and not just how this hold works. it in. Just hold it in, this so sucks. he doesn't see how he hurts you. This sucks. This is gonna. This someone, some cunt's gonna make a compilation. Uh. Look at the fear in her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, we've been in, we've been thoroughly enjoying living together. It's been great. Someone who it's great. I have an office. Yeah. You have an office. Mm-hmm. My office is much prettier. It is. Well, I was just yelling about how I can't put hooks in the walls. I want art and shit. But in I June like we I'm can. In in, if you live in Victoria, in June the laws about rental rights are changing. In yeah. June we can have a cat, which is good because we do have a cat. Don't say that yet. <laughs> well, it's cats out of the bag, isn't it? <laughs> We're like really banking on them not doing a rental inspection before yeah. the laws change. Because usually they do an inspection once a year, yeah. so that's not going to be for another twelve months. And look, if you are and watching by then this, the laws will have changed, and you own this property. This is all satire. Yes. And this is all a comedic art piece. Mm-hmm. I don't even live here. It's a metaphorical cat. That's right. You it, know, Schrodinger's it's in cat. A, yeah. Oh, yeah. I almost said where we lived. You don't. Yeah. That, we don't want cunts to rock out. I've already said Frankston. Oh, I was yeah. going to say Frankston's cat. I've that already. the joke, Schrodinger's oh. cat, Frankston's cat. I've already decided that that's going to be. If I, if I don't acknowledge that I live in Frankston, imagine how much content <coughs> I'm going to miss out on. Same Turns out you've got a lot of fans in Frankston. Every time we go to the supermarket, you've got yeah. some kid being like, oh, bro, hey. I was thinking that was weird, but then I realised how many songs I wrote about coming straight out of Frankston. They were like all my big viral yeah. Australian Everyone, in, Every young guy in Frankston would have seen them. Oh, for sure. Like if someone makes a they would have viral been like, hit yeah, about I identify suburb, with this. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, we've been enjoying the move. Someone who has not been enjoying the move is the shit cat. The shitty, shitty cat. Fuck, it's such a shit cat. Uh, uh, I didn't know. I've, I'm a dog person. I had no idea that cats don't he like He says change. he's a dog person. I am. You say that. Yes, I am. Have you watched how much you love the cat when you interact with it? No, no. Look, guys, well, I might be one of those dads you see on TikTok okay. who never wanted so a cat. So his that words say one thing. Yeah. But then his love and affection for the cat says a very different yeah, but story. You know what? The cat. He, is he'll an be ho- he'll be holding the cat on his lap, rubbing it, giving no, it I've belly rubs, and he goes, "I hate cats. Why don't I hate cats?" I've done that a few times. And then after an hour, he's like, "Oh, I might like the cat a little bit." A little bit, but not very much because she doesn't like me. Cats she don't. Cats she doesn't don't like anyone. Like, no, she especially doesn't like you. Yeah, she doesn't like me a lot. Yeah, because you treat her like a dog. Well, I don't know what else to do. You've never had an animal. I've only ever had dogs. So but I the try thing and do is, the you thing treat- you should do to a pet, which is, hey, mate, how are you going? I love you. And then the cat goes, fuck off, peasant. I'm looking out the window. <laughs> Shit, cat. The cat was so stressed by the moving. I didn't realise how stressed okay, cats got so by change. Okay, so before we move, <coughs> I said to him, we yeah. should get some of that fell away stuff, which is some f- cat pheromones. You plug it in the wall like an air deodorant yeah. and it lets out these cat aroma that you can't smell but the cat can smell and it makes yeah. them comfortable. And I said, I think we're going to need that because she's going to freak out about the move. And I said, it's a fucking animal. It'll get used to it. The cats are out there killing birds them, every day. Have you told them the story about the cat hotel? 
Uh, yeah, I've well, told that so story. So you've experienced the cat hotel. You experienced how much she freaked out. Yeah. She was freaking out so much that the the um, the um hotel staff came and knocked on our door saying, um, excuse me, we can hear that Quick there's recap. a cat freaking we, out. We went there. to a cat-friendly hotel. And, <laughs> and we found out that it was going to cost $180 to have the cat. Why is it? A, it's it's advertised as a pet-friendly hotel. That's and then pet-friendly. After you booked, they emailed us and said, it's going to be another $180 to let your cat stay. And yeah. we were like, oh, Fuck that. we we'll don't have a cat. cat that's fine. Snuck yeah. it in. It was, we nailed that shit. Yeah. They didn't see us bring the cat in. But as soon as we got in, the cat was gone. Excellent. Meow, meow. Terrified. Never Crazy. take this cat on a spy mission. Shit cat. CIA, do not recruit our cat. <laughs> um. So anyway, right, uh, we get... We move. We nailed the move. Took a long time, but we fucking nailed it. We had to move from three different places. Start Fly. getting all set up. <clears throat> nailed it. Cat terrified, having an existential crisis. So what do we you mean started. There's more than one room. <laughs> That's funny. This is terrifying. I hate this. We started the move at. I got up at six a.m. Yeah. Yeah. You got up at like five. He was excited. He yeah. he texted me. He was like, "Oh, wait, we're moving." <laughs> I was. I have. I was saying before how I was so excited, not by this. But by because of how terrible the warehouse was for all of my work, I was mm. like, this is fucked. I have to get out. And uh, I was so excited to actually get back to work. And now I'm here. This is great, right? So so moving day, we started <coughs> at 6 a.m. Yep. We did a DIY self-drive truck. We had my brother and Lewis's brother helping us. We moved yep. from four pickup locations. We had his place, my place, my storage unit and the warehouse. Yeah. It took, we were still going at 8 p.m. 8 p.m., yep, that's right. So that's right. a 14-hour day. Yep. And the last trip and we, we took. we paid in peanuts. That's <laughs> right. You get one move out of your family and friends. Yep. Use it wisely. Yeah. You get one. Next right? time we have to hire movers. You can't and do that to your family again. Oh, I never never will ever do that ever again. I will always use movers from now. But you get one and you should utilize that. And you only get it with your first move. Mm-hmm. If you move the house, you've moved house many times. <coughs> not really. Not that I actually had to move. It was more like pack it in the car before. Oh, do you mean my family? Yeah, your family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did and one move. they don't move. get any help. Yeah, we did one move with the – um. when I was a kid, we did one move with the extended family helping yeah. and, and the rest of the time. moved many times since. Yeah, it yeah. was either do it all entirely by ourselves or we hired movers. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so you got to utilise that shit. Or maybe one every ten years I feel like you would get – Whatever we'll we'll find out in twenty thirty when there's a new when there's fucking COVID twenty nine. <laughs> and so the last trip of the day, we went back to my old place where we'd left the cat in an empty room because obviously yeah. she couldn't come with us while we're moving. She could escape. She could obviously just freak out. Yeah. Um. So we went back. We got the cat. We packed her so nicely in the car. Whole house was set up. Perfect house for a cat to enjoy. And, and and there would be no banging. We wouldn't be moving around. All we'd have to do is let the cat out and go, all right, do whatever you want. Have a sniff, lie down. Brought her into the house. What happened? I don't remember. She had a fucking panic attack. So, oh, my God, a new space, a kitchen and a bathroom. Oh, fuck. I we think no. We looked plan <clears throat> we were like, this is going to be great for us. The cat saw the floor and she was like, I'm going to die. No, the first night she just went into a, a cupboard. She found a cupboard and she didn't yeah. come out. Didn't come out for like 18 hours. And then her like her first day out was just walking around meowing as loud as it could. <laughs> like, holy fuck. She doesn't meow normally. She's not very no, vocal. But she was just going, meow, meow, meow. This sucks. Take me home. It's like, you are home, you fucking moron. And she would not eat. Wouldn't eat food. She wouldn't eat. No, um, cats have eat a thing days. about safety when they eat. Yeah. I had to sit next to her and put two hands on her. So she could eat. And if I took my hands off of her back, she would look at me like, please protect me. It was ridiculous. She wouldn't eat her food. We had to keep picking her up and going, eat your food. It was like a toddler with knives for hands. Ridiculous. And then, right, end of the second day, still not really eating any food at all. It starts going, meow, meow, meow. We're like, what do you want? What's I'm sick of it. I don't give a fuck about the cat. Meow, meow, <laughs> this meow. This is what he says. And then 
it just looks at me and looks at Jazz, stops, and then just vomits everywhere on the floor. And then we're like, what the fuck are you doing? It stressed itself out that much that it vomited. And I was like, what are you doing? Then it ran, took six steps forward, vomited again. Vomiting, by the way, nothing. No food came out. It was just clear liquid. She hadn't had a change of diet. There was nothing. She was not sick. It was just a stress vomit. The move had, going from one room to another room in a different place, it stressed her out so much that she she vomited. Ridiculous. Jeez, never take a cat to a museum. What the fuck? Uh, the room change. Mm, the room change. And to make to make things even better, actually, is immediately after she vomited, she ran out of the room to her litter box. Ran, and, which we thought was great. We're like, oh, great. She's going to go to a safe space. We're like, She'll oh, relax. she must be better. She's Jazz running. Jazz gets the towel, starts cleaning up the vomit. Start cleaning I, up I the relax. vomit. I relax. I'm like, whatever. And I smell something. I'm like, oh, I think she's done a shit. So I go and check on her. Yeah. She's diarrheaed all in the litter box. Everywhere. But then not only in the litter box, she had walked out and she obviously hadn't finished and she started diarrheaing all over the floor of the rental. All down the fucking hallway, got on the walls, all down its own legs, all over its tail. Jazz grabbed the cat, copped a tail, uh, covered in shit Diarrhea to the face. all over her tail. I pick her up to try and get her to a sink to wash her. The tail whacks me in the face. I've got shit all over my face. Shit on the fucking wall. She walls. starts scratching me. I've got this huge scratch here on my arm. Look at her. I'm going to pick her up. Disgusting. It was absolutely it was absolutely filthy. There's shit absolutely everywhere. The cat's freaking out. It's got shit all over it. Then we have to go and put it in the shower and start wiping it down with towels. We're you scared. Then the cat starts yes. getting angry at us. At least when a dog shit somewhere they're not supposed to. They go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not really sure why you're angry, but it is my fault, my bad. A cat would just be like, oh, you're touching me? You must die. Lewis says he doesn't like cats, but every morning he gives her rubs and then he has hay fever all day long because he's allergic. I've stopped doing we that. We didn't know he was allergic. We didn't four. know he was allergic before. Yeah. But <laughs> Why do I have, why did you get this thing? Look how on cute she is. And, yeah, and then, she was being surrendered by her owner. Yeah, that's the that's look, yeah. just tried to bite you just then. Oh, she can't help it. That's its only positive attribute is when you're not touching it, it looks cute, and then the minute you try to do something nice for it, it goes, Oh, I'm gonna kill you. We're the only reason why you can even eat food, you fucking idiot. She's such an idiot. She I was just cooking dinner. There was some cut up chicken scraps on the bench. She can't, she doesn't know how to eat meat. She can only eat little shreds of cat food. Won't even chew food. She she doesn't know. She picks it up in her mouth and she drops it. She doesn't know how to chew. She's a you're useless. It's, it's like a paraplegic that can only walk around when it wants to kill you. She's doing a lot better now, though. We went and bought the fell away stuff after the vomiting, pooping accident. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> ungrateful. <clears throat> Do you, you realize, realize how ungrateful you are? The only thing that it would take for me to take your life away would be to just not open cans. Mm. So and this is, this is how he pretends his relationship is with the cat. But if you follow me on Instagram at Jasmine Artio, no. I will post photos of his true relationship with the cat. No. You're a cat person. I'll take you your are. phone and delete those photos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, check out Patreon if you want early access to the podcast and all my videos. I've got a bunch of stuff coming up. Uh, and check out Jasmine's Instagram. There will be no photos of me on there. I'll make sure of that. Um, <coughs> and, uh, yeah, I've, I'll be coming back soon next Sunday. I'm, uh, I've got no excuse now. If I miss an episode, just find something else to listen to. Let's be honest. It's in my house now. I've got no excuses. I'm doing no shows, no tour all year. I, I'm subsisting on fucking Patreon money and uh, uh, pasta. So, mm. you know, we have a lot of no pasta. Excuse. Just find so someone else. So it turns out that Lewis this. is the problem. Do you want to confess to how much pasta you have? I reckon I got about 15 packs of pasta yeah. in the cupboard. Yeah. But I didn't buy all of that during the crisis. I've always bought lots of pasta because it's the only thing I can cook well. There was about five in my cupboard. And then when the crisis was happening, of course, like everyone, I went out and bought five because if you didn't do that, you would have starved to death. Let's be real. Uh, and uh, then I found, you know, a few more. Every time we go shopping, he buys more pasta. I Absolutely. say, you are the problem. That's right. No, 
It's the supply lines are the problem. That's the real <laughs> issue, you know. At least I'm not like a few of my other friends. Can you who do that with toilet paper? To I think we're running out of toilet paper. No, there's some in the studio. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> You've got that as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look, I'm not as bad as some of my other friends who are signing up to Coles <laughs> Online and ticking the box that says they're disabled. No, don't tell so people can get you can do that. Shopping. You can do that. No, don't you shouldn't tell do people. that. I'm not. I don't do that. But obviously, it's pretty obvious that you could do that. So if apparently, you want. it's really easy. You just have to write a letter that says you're disabled. <laughs> then you yeah. can get what are they going to do? Come around, come around with a guy that hits you in the legs with a baseball bat just to check. <laughs> well, you wouldn't feel it, would you? No, because you're disabled if you tick the box. Mm. Don't do that. That's a horrible thing. You know, if you do that, I explained this to my friend. It actually made me angry. I was like, you are quite literally taking food out of the mouths of other disabled people. And he's like, yeah, but I don't have to go to the shops. Well, I was like, right. fuck, fair you enough. Know, so I ticked the box. Eugenics, a little bit. No, that's not how we're ending this episode, all Why right? Uh, we're ending it with uh, support me on the Patreon for more jokes about eugenics. The, the old. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for listening. <laughs> I'll talk to you next Sunday. Have a shit one. Uh, also, Bye. email me your uh, life advice questions to podcast at lewespears.com. Or if you have any questions, questions for me, Probably I will ne- be hanging around. I haven't done an episode around. for a while. Yes. Yeah, Jazz will be around if you need some advice from a mm-hmm. lovely lady. All right? See you later. Have a shit one. Bye.